Hey guys, what is up? This is Yanis and welcome to the Empowered Entrepreneur Podcast. Today we have here with us Brad Burton and we're going to have a really interesting conversation because Brad is the founder of 4 Networking, the largest joined up business network in the UK. He's the highest rated and five-star reviewed business author on Amazon and the UK's number one motivational business speaker. Brad, welcome to the show. Yanis, how are you doing? Star, you okay? Doing great, yeah. I'm doing amazing. Hey, likewise, likewise, friend. Cool. So, for the people that don't know you, who are mm-hmm. you? What do you do? And basically, what's your story, mate? All right. So, I am uh, 46 now. And my teacher said to me I'd never amount to anything. And up until 31 years of my life, he was absolutely right. He was on the money. Uh, but at 31, I changed. I, I, I changed. You know, I don't have a qualification to be there, not one. Uh, I've done four years on benefits. Uh, I brought up in the mean streets of Salford, Manchester. And I think it's fair to say, um, you know, on my, according to my CV, I probably should have been a bank robber. And, and actually, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere along the way, I decided to make changes because I realised that the way I was living wasn't going to really uh, uh, result in a decent life. So I, I made some changes. And at 31, I was delivering pizzas to keep my business afloat. Started a business back then. And that business... Um, is now a multi-million pound business. It's a business called Four Networking, as you mentioned. It's the business networking organisation, and uh, we run five thousand meetings across the UK each year. And nobody gave me a chance. Nobody apart from me. And since that point, I realised that um, that your biggest chance of success is your brain. Your biggest chance of failure is your brain. And actually, the thing that that holds us back is this. The thing that propels us forward is this. So it's like literally a binary decision. Is it a positive brain? Is it a negative brain? Uh, is it propelling me? Is it holding me back? And, and actually, I, I, if, if I look at my previous life, up until 31, it was holding me back. Uh, it was a negative brain. It was destructive. And now it's positive, constructive, and it propels me forward. And that's what I help other people do now. I'm a motivational speaker. And bear in mind, you know, motivational speakers aren't born. They're not like, oh, you're going to be, you go to your, your careers officer, and they say, oh, you're going to be a motivational speaker. I kind of fell into it because, I realized that people, when I was sharing my story, people were going, oh, that's so inspirational. I'm thinking, okay. And then I kind of just fell into that as well. So I speak for global brands, uh, motivating and inspiring their workforce as well. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Really interesting. <laughs> um, the thing is that, you know, many people don't see it like that. And here's what I would like to, to have your input. Like, I know so many entrepreneurs that are on this journey and they feel like being constantly on this negative headspace that you mentioned. So what could be, for example, a couple of practical tips that you could give them in order to, you know, transcend from this negative self-image they have into something more empowered you know, so, to go towards so, what they want? So what, what ends up happening is people have it in their mind's eye. So let's, let's take it from me, living on council estates over in Salford, right? So in my mind's eye, where I want to be is jets. I want to have my own jet. I want to have a private island. I want to have a Lamborghini. I want to, you know, I want to have unlimited wealth. And actually, that is so far removed from the reality of most normal people that you end up uh, dreaming so, 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 so lofty, it becomes a nightmare. So what I urge people to do is to have small goals, small goals. And actually, this is what I do. So in order for you to be a millionaire, you first got to make £10, then £100, then £1,000. Ten thousand pounds and a hundred thousand. But people want to go from here. They want look at some video on YouTube or Facebook, and you've got some twenty-six-year-old kid getting out of a Lamborghini and go, "I can follow him." That's what I need to do. So, the way that I would tell people to stop being so negative is by making, uh, you know, when you do a jigsaw, you know, as a child, if I was to say to a four-year-old, "Do a jigsaw," they would just try clump it together. If you say to an adult or you say to a child who is 10 years old, do a jigsaw, the first thing they would do is get the corners. And then what they would do is get the outside. So so many people are concentrating on the big picture that they're missing all the small individual bits that you've got to do beforehand. And I think that's what I would say to people. Stop with this fucking bullshit that you've seen on the internet about what a life should be. You know, I'm in a position right now where I've got a five-bedroom house. Five-bedroom house, I have one room that I don't go in. If I was to work really, really hard, I could realize my dream, which was once to have a 10-bedroom mansion. If I got a 10-bedroom mansion, guess what? I'd have six fucking rooms I don't go in. So, so we end up having these big dreams that become a fucking nightmare. 
And I urge people to actually make certain that what you're chasing is what you want. And that's how, because people, you know, I had it in my mind's eye. My mum said something to me. She went, Brad, have a sit down. I'm going to have to break this to you. She says, you're not Jay-Z. And it was like, <laughs> because in my mind's eye, you know, I thought life should be like a rap video, you know. And, and, and this is why we all get fucked up, because we have it in, 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 our, in our heads about what our life should be. And what your life should be is be better in the next two weeks than the previous two weeks. And that's the secret to success, is not thinking my five-year plan is this. You know, I've got no idea what's happening next fucking five seconds. It could be a missile coming over from North Korea. So I've got these big plans that I'm wasting fucking life. All we have in our lives is today. That's all we have. And what I urge people is stop looking at the past because that causes us uh, depression. Stop looking in the future. That causes us anxiety. And start looking at today and press play on today. And that's to me, is how I've managed to get myself in a really good place. Financially, business, time, health, a lot. But before this, I got myself in a mess. I was negative. Even though I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I had a big business, I was negative because it was burning me out. And every single time I pushed, it, it kind of, it cost me a piece of me. So I urge people to make certain that what they're pursuing is what they want. Because people say that happiness is always around the next corner. Contentment is always around the next corner. Success is always around the next corner. When I get that television, my life's going to be good. When I get the next big size television, then when I get it, it fucking never ends. And you end up like, like Pac-Man going through life, just completing maze after maze after maze, and then scratching your fucking head thinking, is that all life's about? And that's where I was. But life's good now. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally, totally. I totally agree with that. Cause, and, and actually, because you briefly mentioned it, I'm very curious to hear your opinion about regret because, you know, many people, you know, just dream to be, well, just they set huge goals and this is un completely unrealistic to achieve without having the step-by-step -step process. But some others are afraid to take action just because they might fail. So how would you go about it? How would you well, discuss the concept well, of regret? Well, let, let, me, let me tell you the two things here. Uh, what makes an expert, right? What makes an expert in any field is someone who has made all the mistakes in a field. So in order for an expert, you to be considered an expert or me to be considered an expert at speaking, I need to make all the mistakes. I've made every fucking mistake going, right? Yeah. So yeah. people are scared of making a decision in case it's a mistake. Fucking, Amen. you know, so how the fuck do you become an expert? The way you become an expert is by making all the mistakes. So... So, so, so in order for you to, to you know, oh, I might fail. Yeah, you might, you twat. And that is what makes you an expert. You know, I failed on everything in my life. I failed on so many fronts of my life. Relationships, health, well-being, business, money, fucking everything. I fucked up everything. And actually, it's about when you start looking at it and say, okay, what have I learned from this? So if somebody is scared of failure and they don't uh, take a decision, they've just failed anyway. You've got fuck all to lose. Yeah. Beautifully said, beautifully said. And I think that, you know, it's exactly what you said, basically, that you need to fail. And the, it's so beautiful failing, right? Like you learn those mistakes, those lessons, and now you can change your whole route and go towards what you really want to do, right? But there is another step before that is having a why, having a purpose, having a vision. And so entrepreneurs... You know, Yanis, you know, Yanis, so many people have a vision that is fucked up is about going back to fucking having a, a Zonda driving around Monaco with some fucking Playboy girl with a fucking chinchilla fucking jacket on listening to Jay-Z and brand new fresh sneakers. You know, and, and like, this is not the real fucking world. The real world is empty and binned. The real world is fucking going to your car without a five pence bag with all this shit. You know, that's the real world. But people have got it all twisted and there's almost this veneer of entrepreneurial about what an entrepreneur should be. Let me tell you what I believe an entrepreneur should be. Someone who's got enough time and enough money to enjoy their life. That's it, right? But I, 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 my business, it could be fucking miles bigger. But I can't be asked. I've got everything that I want. But you know what somebody said to me? Oh, Brad, you've got self-limiting beliefs. I am from council estates in Salford, Manchester. I've got a fucking amazing house. I've got an amazing car. I've got an amazing family. I've got one of fucking amazing holidays. I've got a business that runs without me. And I've got self-limiting beliefs. I've written four fucking books. And this is the thing. It's bullshit. People just like, when does it end? 
when does this pursuing this fucking thing end? And actually, I've realised something. I'm 46. At one day, I'm going to die. Right? I'm going to not be here. I'm going to be fucking dead, put in a fucking furnace and turn to dust. So, what the fuck? I'm going to waste more life trying to get what? A bigger business? I'm going to waste more life trying to get what? A faster car that goes fucking 0 0.3 seconds faster to six there. What the <laughs> fuck is it about? You know, so my, me now, I'm not asked these fucking, if you, these guys want to go and have yachts and they want to go and fucking be in a hyper wealthy and have a jet with a bed in it, and I've got a perfectly good fucking bed there. Granted, it doesn't fly around the fucking world. But if I want to get a jet, I can go and get a bed. So I, I, I look at things differently, Yannis. I look at things differently to most normal people because, you know, I, I could do so much better in business. I could make more money in business. What's the fucking point? Okay. So why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? To so give myself and my, life, my family a life, which I've, I've now got that life. So, so at which point should I keep running and, and, and get more? You know, would, would, would my family be happier if they had uh, Christy Lebouton fucking trainers for 500 pounds and gold taps? It, it's just fucking that. This is overconsumption in life. That people get all twisted. And that doesn't mean don't be ambitious. I'm ambitious. Fuck me, I've written four books. Four fucking books. I speak on global stages. But honestly, the idea that I'm going to go and work to go and buy a hundred million dollar fucking jet, you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather go and get a fucking photograph and photo Photoshop a, a fucking Brad Burton logo for fucking five pounds. <laughs> put it on my social media. Who the fuck are you doing this for? Who are you doing your life for? People are so obsessed with fucking other people's opinions of them. I couldn't give two fucks. If people think I swear too much, fuck off. I'm not asked. I'm, I couldn't give two <laughs> fucks. It's not me being rude. It's my life. It is my life. In the same way it's your life. If you want to get offended, that I swear, that's cool. That's your decision. It's your life. But I choose to be me. And that's where so many people go wrong. You end up reaching a level in business and you have to change to fit in. You have to start wearing pink, uh, uh, what you call it, um, Ralph Lauren t-shirts and wearing chinos and, and actually, you know, and, 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 and having three course meals with, you, you, count me out, count me out. Yeah. So I'm, not, I'm not conforming. I'm not conforming in any way or form. I'm conforming to my life and what I want to do. And I urge all your listeners and, and viewers to do the same because I'm telling you something, this is the road to success because I ended up with success. I was ill, sick success. Because I was pursuing this bullshit life that I thought the world wanted me to, 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 to get. Fuck that. You get the life that you want to get. True. But how can someone do that? Because, you know, there are like so many people, especially entrepreneurs. Like, I know so many people. And, you know, I've been there myself because I am originally from Athens, Greece. And Greece is not the same like the UK, right? We have different head of spaces and different mindsets. And, you know, there are all these people that will tell you, Come on, entrepreneurship is for people with no jobs. You will never make it. You're not enough. You're not this. You're not that. What would you say to people? How could they stop listening to other people telling them that, you know what? You cannot do it. You are not enough. Yanis, you have locked up. Sorry, Yanis, that last bit just went all choppy. I didn't understand. Say, repeat that last question, please. Yeah, maybe it's because of the Greek accent. <laughs> so I said that, you know no, what? No, 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 Yanis, Yanis, it was nothing to do with that. I promise you. It's chop, no, 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 chop, chop. I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm just Come joking. So yeah, basically I said that, you know, because there are so many people, so many entrepreneurs that really don't and can't deal with the fact that there are other people that are against them, right? Their families, their best friends. Uh, their partners, their relationship. There are so yeah, many yeah. people that tell them that you cannot do it, that you're not enough. How can someone leave this head of space and go back into chasing what he really deserves out of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 think about it. Turn the fucking volume down on these people. Turn the volume down on these people. Turn the voice up on yourself. When I started my business, £25,000 in debt, delivering fucking pizzas at 31 to keep my business afloat. 30 fucking one. How old are you? 25. Right, try being 31 delivering pizzas. You'll feel like a piece of shit. But if I'd not delivered pizzas, I wouldn't be where I am now. Where I don't have to fucking work, right? So my wife didn't want me to start my own business. She did not want me to start my business, my wife. She was like, no, I, I'm scared. I want you to get a job. 
and I had to turn down the volume on her, listen to her tears, ooh, turn down, fuck off. Because it's a bit like a sniper. You're about to take a shot, and you've got someone saying, don't take the shot. It's like, fuck off. I, I'm, I'm ready to go, and I don't. So you need to fucking trust your own voice. Now, if you start your own business off, and it doesn't work, you go and get a proper job, which is the starting point where you come from anyway. So you had a job, and you walked out, you go and get another job. You ain't going to start to death. I'll tell you what, most people would love to be in my position now. But most people wouldn't be prepared to put up with 14 years or nine years of shit. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to quit, right? I just, now I've been in business 14 years. In the first nine years, I wanted to quit 11 times. In the last five years, guess how many I wanted to quit? None. Correct. So the first nine years, 11 times. On average, 1.1 per year. In the last five years, zero. Life's fucking good. But most people would quit on eight, seven, six, five, whatever. And, and it's, it's, you know, often the difference between success and failure isn't quitting. So if you look at me and I've gone, fuck this, yeah. You know, this is, this is all about this whole thing about, um, you know, look at me. A good example. I wanted to quit 11 times, nine years. Since that point, brilliant. If I'd have quit eight, I'd have been going back to the jobs. Yeah, it's fucking hard work running the business too. I tell you, you've got to keep going. And once you realise you're not going to starve to death, what's the risk? You can, always go on a lot, you can always go on a lot further than you actually believe you can. A lot further. Yeah. You know, I think that eight, someone would be willing to to give up from the first time maybe. And most of the people just, you know, most of the entrepreneurs, I don't know, like give up after the first two years or something. It's a hard journey, right? right? It's not like it's sunshine, right. rainbows and unicorns. It's no, 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 no. And this is, but, but what's happened is people have got themselves fucking twisted in that they believe that somewhere along the way, some fucking idiot course that you're going to go buy, webinar or a fucking video, a fucking $3,000, $2,997 is going to be the panacea. Fucking, there's nothing in that webinar that you can't get in a fucking £10 book, right? The only difference is it's been packaged differently. And yet people fucking want to believe that somehow they've got themselves the fucking winning ticket, a lottery ticket to success. But I'm telling you right now, 14 fucking years of working, 60 hour weeks, 60 fucking hour weeks to get to the point where I'm at. And if you believe you can go and buy some fucking automation, you are talking out your fucking ass. I'm telling you now, I don't know anyone, and I know entrepreneurs of all levels, I don't know anyone who's got an automated business. Now, maybe I'm not in that world. Maybe I'm not in that world, right? Or maybe, just maybe, it's bullshit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So how would someone should start thinking in terms of, you know, because you can't do everything. You shouldn't be working in the business all the time, right? You also need to live your life and you also need to scale your business if you want to. So how would someone should go about building a team, right? Okay. What would your advice so, be? So, 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 so first and foremost, you can't go left and right at the same time, okay? I want to mm -hmm. go left, you want to go right. So you imagine like a tug of war. You want to go left, I want to go right. We're stuck. Brexit is a good example of that. Some people want to leave, some people want to stay, right? I would like to have abs. I would love to have abs, but I like pizza. I like pizza, right? People want to be single, but they want to be married. People want to be an entrepreneur, but they want security. Fucking choose. Make a fucking decision, right? And if you want to, if you, if you, uh, the other thing about teams, right? It's the most romantic vision ever. Oh, I'm going to get a team and this and another. But let me tell you something about teams. They take time to build. And for every single person that looks amazing, jazz hands. Oh my God, this guy's the best sales director ever fuck all is going to happen you just don't know so stop 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 putting these preconceived ideas about what it is once you've got something good people will gravitate towards you if you mm -hmm. think you shit no one's going to gravitate but what people end up doing hi i've got this great idea for this app what we're looking for is investment of three hundred thousand. we look we need a sales director we need a get to fuck right get to fuck i get people approach me all day long and you know what investment and i say oh do you have a mortgage you go yeah so why don't you put that on it well, I don't want to do that just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> so, so, so you want me to put my fucking money on it, but you're not prepared to put yours? Do you 100% believe in it? Yeah. Well, in which case, why don't you put your, your mortgage on it? Uh, 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 so, you know, don't worry about it. You, you know, uh, uh, anyone starting a business off, don't worry about it. And what I mean by that, 
take, go back down to what I said. Press play on today. Look at this and say, okay, what decisions do I need to make in order to get to where I need to be? Micro decisions. Your success or failure will be defined by your ability to make decisions. Want more success? Make better decisions. That's what I do now. I make fucking every single decision. The other day, I was driving. I was going to speak at an event. It was half eight. There was a McDonald's there. I thought, I would love a double sausage and egg McMuffin. Drove around and I went, fuck that. I drove around and fucked off. Now, that's not a, it's a small micro decision. But the point I'm making is that over a course of a, of, of, a, of a year would mean I was half a stone heavier. So it's that micro decisions about making these micro decisions and being conscious of every single decision that you make. Not just the big ones, but every single decision that you make. Should you have 178 calorie fucking cappuccino or should you have a 40 calorie uh, fucking macchiato? Small micro decisions. Sh sh should we do, sh should we do, um, should we start a business today or should we start a business in a week's time when we see whether we get on? These micro decisions, but don't be, you know, don't be in a hurry to lose. So many people nowadays want it all now. Yeah, what we'll do, we'll get a business and we'll IPO it in fucking two years time and we'll make loads of money and then fucking grow up. Bullshit. You've been watching too many fucking documentaries. That's not the real world for the vast majority of people. It's not the real world. So it's about micro decisions. It's about the small micro decisions making them right. Mm -hmm. And then an, an entrepreneur should be taking different decisions throughout his day. And I believe that an entrepreneur needs to be a leader, a leader of himself first. Self-leadership, yeah. Yeah, a leader of his social circle then, and then the leader of his own team. So my question to you is, how can someone, uh, even if he believes that he doesn't have the native, you know, the real, uh, he, he, if someone is not born being a leader, how can someone become a leader? Any advice, any tip, any thought on that? Yeah, so real terms, every ingredient that you're going to have, you pretty much got, right? So I have a face like a potato. Okay, I, 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 you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Right? I have a face like a potato. I could sit there going, I don't have the necessary skills to be a fucking underwear model. I'm too fat. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the oh, I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader. I'm not a born leader. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Right. You have got every ingredient that you're going to get. That's it. Brad, you look like a potato. Get fucking used to it. Oh, sit me the fucking days down there. Single strip. Oh, I'm not a leader. Shush. What you need to do is accept that you, you've got every ingredient. The thing that can be changed is your recipe. Your recipe can be changed. I, me, Brad, the dynamic entrepreneur, four books, author, da, 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 was washing cars 20 years ago to keep me fit, but to, to, when I first moved down here. I had no business. I've done four years on benefits. I'm no leader. I'm no entrepreneur. I'm no businessman. I'm washing fucking cars, balloting cars at Honda. For fucking six pounds an hour. You know, and actually, what changed? I did. So you understand, I am just a car valeter. 20 years ago, the guy who's, 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 who's fucking my boss, he wouldn't have thought, oh, this guy's a bit clever. He would have just seen a car valeter. So somewhere along the way, you know, I morphed, I changed, and that goes on to micro decisions. And that's, that's the key to this thing. So, you know, we can't all be Jay-Z. We can't all be Bill Gates. We can't all be Brad Burton. But what you can be is the better version of you. We can all be a better version of ourselves. And it starts today. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. I agree on that totally. And another one, another concept which is really important, you know, with networking is this quote that people say that your network is your net worth. So oh. what would you say about that? How should someone start building relationships uh, as an entrepreneur and as, you know, a uh, human in general? You know, it's, but that's the key to it. Talk. People have these, yeah, what I'm looking for. I'm going to go to a network and we're looking for solicitors that can buy our products and they fucking stop, right? It's not just the person you're talking to. It's all the people they know. So people go, oh, I don't need to know, Brad. Well, you don't know who the fuck I know. But the only way that I'm going to access my database and my, my people is if I get have a relationship with you. But so many people are, are, are trying to focus on, on this, like, almost hunting. And what you need to be is just fucking have conversations. I, I, I never have a strategic approach to my networking. What I do is have conversations. And those people that I hit it off with, I maintain contact. Those people that I don't, I don't. Simple as that. So have conversations and check out for networking in local groups all over the national thing. Like genuinely, 
for networking, my, 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 my network is I created a format which is unique. It's the only one in the UK. As a full networking member, you can go to any group and you have three 10 minute appointments in, in group time. So you have 10 minutes with people who spoke about their business. You go, oh, we might have a chat with them. 10 minutes. And that's crucial. 10 minutes is long enough to establish do I like someone? Rather than having the 60 minute drive to someone's office, sat there in reception for 10 minutes, they sit you down, you, you sit down, we've got an hour together. And then you realize something, Yannick, that you think I'm a prick. I think you're a prick but we've got 58 minutes of bullshit to go. So it's actually just about a conversation. Don't over, don't over engineer networking. It's a conversation. Just like when you've ever met a girl in a nightclub or a pub or a bar or whatever. It's a well on the way. It's innocuous fit and now boom. That's what you've got to do. And, 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 and you've got to dance around the handbag a little bit. And what I mean by that, you don't just invite somebody back for a coffee. You have to, you know, talk and communicate and actually build a relationship up. But so many people just want to get to the meet. No good. Yeah. But what if someone who really wants to network with someone starts seeing that, you know what, this person is completely off the grid and I can't really go, you know, because I'm not ready yet. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to a nice round right now. But these are a couple of questions that I think that I definitely want you to respond. And I have so many people in my network and on my social media that say that, you know what, I'm not ready yet. She's a bigger person of mine. She's more well-known. She has more money than me. What can I possibly offer? How can I possibly network with this person? So how can someone destroy this limiting belief? So get a commonality. So for me, the smartest way, if somebody wanted to network with me and to get to know me, the smartest way would be to follow me on Twitter, at me, start talking. When they see something that is a hotspot, i.e. Uh, I'm into computer games or walking my dog or going to the gym, there's some commonality. Oh, what game are you playing, Brad? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, so you, when you're next in Manchester, is that? And actually, humans will answer. They're not going to go, oh, snub. They're not going to not respond to you. And that's the key to this thing. So, so, so you know, I, I've got... It's people who are so much bigger than me. But remember, every single entrepreneur or every single person that you want to network with is a human being. That's it. They're just normal people that have homes and play computer games and go to the gym and walk the dog and go to Sainsbury's and don't have any five pence bags. You know, they're just normal people. So stop putting these people on a the pedestal. They are just normal people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, and now I want to ask you a couple of questions that I always ask everyone that joins the podcast. And the first one is, who is basically your role model? And if you ever had the chance to meet him or her, what kind of question would you ask? So my role model, and there's been a slightly uh, history has not been kind to this individual, but my role model was probably um, Tony Blair, because I was long-term unemployed in 1997 and Tony Blair came into power and within nine days I got myself a job and what happened for me is that whole things can only get better mentality where it was a, a culture in the UK of euphoria and I, it, it kind of taught me something which is about straight speaking about being honest about being approachable that you could change things and that's I based for networking on new labor in 1997 and I based a lot of my whole approach in business based albeit slightly rawer on Tony Blair. Um, so Tony Blair, I would, um, yeah, the real idol of mine, shame about the Iraq war thing, if I'm honest, and I'm not, I'm not feeling his, his view on Brexit and stuff now, but nonetheless, um, Tony Blair it was, was, a, was a big influence on me, probably the largest influence in my life. Mm -hmm. And what would you ask him if you... Uh, well, you know, I'd, I'd probably ask him the question, uh, if you knew what you knew now, what would you do differently? Nice. Yep. I keep that as a note because I like it as well. Perfect. Um, another thing which I, I personally believe it's really important is having like a sort of routine, right? Like a daily habits, daily routines in, yeah. in the morning, in the night before you go to sleep or when you wake up. What sure. is your morning looks like and do you have any kind of habits that you follow along every single morning to stay, you know, more motivated and create like a momentum? Yeah. So 
every morning I get up Monday to Friday, I do a task for my club, my now what club, my private members club. I do a task where actually every single morning, 6.15, I've got to think about where my community is, where are they, what, need, what do they need help with now and support with, and actually do that every single day. It's taking about 45 minutes, uh, and, and then I just stick about on the phone uh, watching Facebook cat videos. Something that I always do, something that, let, let me understand this, an hour is an hour, right? So all this hustle and grind bullshit and getting up from 5 a.m. club and fucking no sleep, enter, but shut the fuck up, go to bed. And actually, I, um, I go to bed, I went to, I went to sleep today at 3.15 uh, till 4 o'clock today. I always go to sleep for a, for a 40 minute nap every day, but it's 12 o'clock. I always, always like 80% of the time. And, and people go, oh, that's not very professional. Get to fuck. It's my life. It's my world. I couldn't give a fuck. What do we need to do? Have a fucking three-piece suit and a pocket watch on when I'm doing an interview. You know, so, so, so do, an hour is an hour. Whether you're working at 11 o'clock at night, whether you're working at 3 o'clock in the morning, whether you're working, it's an hour. It's your hour. And every ta- when you're a business owner, every hour is a work hour. Every hour is a play hour. Do you choose what you do with your time? So that's what I would say uh, to any individual. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel that you've got to do it what people tell you. Do it your way. As long as it works, do it your way. That's a nice input because, you know what, I, I personally believe that, you know, I, I received like this question a couple of days ago on my Instagram and it was like, so do you think that it's better for me to wake up early or work until late? And I personally believe that you need to try. Like for some people, it worked greatly, you know, waking up before the sun rises. Yeah, yeah. But for some others, it's really even better, you know, to just work late hours. It's completely up to us. Whatever works for anyone, exactly. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, favorite quote you ever heard or? Yeah, it's one of mine. One of mine. One of mine. Uh, help many, hurt few, live life. Is my, is my religion. Radism. And what does help this many, mean? Help many, hurt few, live life. And actually, people say, well, why hurt few? You cannot go through life without hurting people. Right? And what I mean by that is no matter how, how benign your intent is, you're on occasion going to fuck up. You're going to hurt someone. So help many, hurt few, live life. My bradism is my, my religion, what I live by, my bradism. So I live by that. I live by that. that those rules, like primary directives of Robocop. Help many, hurt few, live life. That's how I live. And, it, and it's such a fucking great, great moral code. It is, yeah. And it, it helps you stay more grounded and grateful. Talk to, the, talk to the, Oh, all day long. All day long. Mm-hmm. Okay. What if now something happens, right? And you lose everything, all the money you got, you have, all the business, everything, and you stay with only your knowledge and your memories. What would you do in order to go back on track and rebuild your business? What would you oh, do? Oh, yeah, p- perfect. So, uh, so I was already there seven years ago. I was as close as anyone could get maybe eight years now, as close as anyone could get to the fucking unraveling mentally. I was a bit unraveled mentally. I had a breakdown, nervous breakdown. And my marriage was fucked. My health was fucked. Everything was fucked. Fucked, 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 fucked. And I used that to rebuild myself differently. So if you imagine the game Jenga where you put the pieces, you know, it was like a wobbly tower and it all fell. And the great thing about a deconstruction is you get to rebuild yourself differently. So I would just get on, I would just share my story like a motivational speaker, which is what I'll do now. And I, I, that credibility, if, if I lost everything today, I, I'm in such a great place because this is the biggest business tool. And all that memory and all that experience would allow me to, so the best way to get through a minefield is by following someone who's been through a minefield. So I'm good. Like genuinely, if I could download my brain to people, fucking ace, because it's such a winning mentality now. But it, it, it's been hard fought. So it doesn't scare me in the slightest. It genuinely doesn't scare me because it's, it has to go catastrophically wrong in my life in order for that to be the case. So I put safeguards in place. I've got three or four businesses now. Mm-hmm. So what would be your first action? Uh, I would go live on Facebook and say, guys, let me be really honest with you. I've lost everything. And actually, I'm going to ask every single individual that I've ever supported or helped to help me right now. So, well, that's what I did. Because I've helped loads of fucking people. I've helped thousands of people. So I think that would have a, a, be, a, be a, a real, I, I don't think it'd be too long for those people who I help to come and try to support me to get me back to where I need to be. But I'll be really honest about it. I wouldn't hide. 
mm-hmm. the power of networking, right? True story. And actually, when you spent 14 years, sorry, 13 years creating a network, it, you know, it'd be there for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And let's suppose also that you go back in time and you meet the 18-year-old version of yourself. And mm. what would you say, what would you advise him? Why wait? Why wait, Brad? You know, you I've got so much fucking intelligence, uh, drive, ability and ambition. Fucking let it go. Stop fucking about. Why wait? What are you waiting for? Perfect conditions. You've been waiting a very long time. Go today. Go do shit. Now. Today. 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 Okay. And... Nice one. You no, no. I, I'm trying to think. You know, um, I, I've never received this kind of uh, response from any other of my guests. Like it's almost, it's always like I wouldn't change anything, or I would do this, or I would do that. But you said something that really, you know, I felt like because we're always waiting, man. And you know, time, time flies, and we're going to die. And you're so, like everything falls into pieces now. You're right. You need to do things now. Perfect. Okay. My last question to you. And, you know, this podcast is listened by entrepreneurs, right? People that just started a business, people that are already in business or people that are trying to scale their businesses. So for the people that watch this podcast right now, what would your advice be? Make certain that you're, what you're chasing is what you really want. And what I mean by that, it doesn't mean like, you know, dumb down your dreams, but just make certain that, you know, what is it about getting taking this conversation, a Bugatti, you want a Bugatti, you get a Bugatti, what is it about that that changes your life? Like, you know, what is it about that? Because I've got every trap in that I could sensibly want. And um, and I promise you, happiness doesn't rely there. It doesn't reside there. And yet, I kind of, if you'd have talked to me 14 years ago, I'd have thought that's where it was. Happiness is an internal job. You can be fundamentally happy today. And it goes back down to what I said. Uh, I've just got wrote my notes here. Uh, from the outset, is that you can be happy, you can be unhappy, you can be positive, you can be negative, you can hold back, you can propel yourself forward. And I would say to anyone, uh, entrepreneur, make certain uh, that you know where where you're going, why you're going, and actually, what is it about if you get there that you really want specifically? What is it when you get there? What what will change in your life? Is it you know have you been watching too many fucking rap videos? Or is it something that you really want for the right reasons? And I think, like, if I knew what I knew now, I would never have unraveled. I, I had a mental breakdown, like, seven years ago, like, genuinely. Um, two and a half years in the wilderness. I had no idea that I was going to get back to normal because I was broke, right? And I would broke myself. And there's a price to pay for success. I got it before, success. What is that cost that you're willing to pay? Is it, you know, bear in mind you are going to die at some point. So how much time are you willing to invest for a Bugatti, if you see what I'm saying? So life, which is actually in the grand scheme of things, a Bugatti or... So I'll give an example. If you had one day left of your life, you can either have a Bugatti and have that for one day, or you can have two, two days. Which one would you have? Two days of extra or a Bugatti in one day? You'd have two days, right? 100%. So what does, that, what does that say? It says that this shit that we chase isn't worth a fuck. In the grand scheme of things, it's not. And actually, you know, although if you think you've got loads of life, oh, what have you got to Now, this doesn't mean don't be ambitious. Be ambitious, be driven. But what you need to be is happy. Because if you drive and your ambition that's causing you to be unhappy, you've just fucking found your level. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Drop the mic here. Super sick. Um, Brad, I didn't have any other, I don't have any other question. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, listen, I've enjoyed that, mate. Really. For the people that want to reach out to you, learn from you, how, what's the best way for them to, you know, stay in touch? Yeah, just, just find, find me on social media. Go and go go Google me. Go and Google me, Brad Burton. Get an education. Find me on social media, Twitter, uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Uh, let me know that you come by your show. And then consider my private members club. Uh, now what club dot rocks right i'm not going to get into it too much i don't I, i'm not the sales pitch but if, if this is spoke to you if you think well, this guy can help me i can help you now what club dot rocks 40 pounds a month no contract try it for a month if you don't think it's any good fuck off it's actually 40 quid however i am changing the game i am changing the personal development game i'm doing it in a manner which 
I'm doing it so cheap that people are going, what's the fucking catch? There's none. I'm doing it because I don't need the money. In the nicest possible way, and I'm not being rude, I, I've got everything that I fucking want. If I didn't have my full networking business and stuff, then I'd have to do it differently. But because of that, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, before, I never had a, a moat around me. So anyone would just contact me and I'd help them out. Now I say, hey, listen, if you want my help or support, join the Nowot Club. And if they don't join the Nowot Club, I don't have to waste my life and energy on, on somebody who doesn't give a fuck about me. So, you know, the most valuable asset that I have is time. And I need to ensure that I spend it wisely. Spend it with those people that want my help, really want it, not just say they fucking want it. Ask holes. <laughs> Perfect. Definitely, guys, check uh, Brad Burton on uh, social media. Follow him on Instagram as well. He's posting some really cool things. Uh, um, and I also really, really enjoyed the conversation today. You share some really interesting nuggets of wits wisdom. I really feel motivated and on fire. And thank you, you know. thank you very much for your time, man. I really appreciate I'm it. I'm delighted. Thank you so much, Janice. I'm going to go back to my computer again and go see my kids. Cheers, champ.